Hello everyone. Today I'm trying to restore one of my very first graphic cards, which is this S3 Trio 64V+. I already worked on this card a little bit, but nothing seemed to have worked. I already replaced the capacitors, I replaced the BIOS chip, I reflowed the pins around the S3 chip, but none of this seemed to have worked. When I plug this card into a system, the entire boot process stalls out at one of the first postcodes that you get, like C0 or C1. So yeah, something is off with this card. Now, why do I want to restore it? Because, well, I'm not sure, but is this an Adlib card? Is this made by Adlib? I'm not sure. Maybe someone of you knows about this. I have no further details about this card right now. Maybe I will find some more information about this card during the course of this video. But right now I can only say, well, it doesn't generate a picture. Initially, I wanted to start with this card, which is an NVIDIA FX 5600 XT, I believe. Yes, and it's nothing special. It's just a card that has seen better days. I think this entire fan or it's stuck and I think it will fall out if I push it too far. It even cracked. So yeah, I, I wanted to give this a try, but unfortunately there are so many components at the back that are scrapped off here are some smd components that are missing including a transistor this one here which i don't know which one this is i can only try to find information online on pictures i haven't done this yet but maybe if you have this card well you can let me know and maybe we can get this to work some other time but not today so we will focus on this S3 card today. It was part of my very first PC, a 486DX4100. And yeah, I would like to get it back into a working condition. And I was thinking the only thing that I haven't tried is to replace the S3 chip. So every time I went to the scrapyard, I kept an eye out for S3 cards. And I have two cards here. One of these cards will deliver the donut chip for my, well, probably Adlib card. And I have a feeling that most of you will already say, uh, don't take the STB card because, well, STB was also the manufacturer of Voodoo 3 cards when 3DFX started to make their own boards and cut out all the other vendors like Diamond and Creative and all the other board manufacturers. I already tested this card and it seems to be working flawlessly, so well, I don't want to destroy it. So this one is safe. And then I found this one. This card isn't in the best condition. And yeah, I'm really annoyed by this quality assurance sticker on the BIOS chip and it's yellow. So yeah, I don't have much love for this card. So I will try to transplant this chip onto this card. I already checked under the microscope if there are any touching pins. but all is good. So let's test this card quickly. And if it works, then we can start with the process of swapping the chips. Okay. So this card is working fine and the board is working well too. Okay, so now let's swap the chips. But before that, let me thank today's video sponsor, PCBWay. If you like to work on DIY projects and need a partner for your next project, check out PCBWay.com. They offer a wide variety of services, including CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and injection molding. I exclusively use PCBWay for my projects because they consistently deliver high quality in a short amount of time. You can also head over to PCBWay's shared project space and have a look at interesting projects, ready for you to order with just a few clicks. Recently, I made the MIDI Forge Maestro available, a wavetable board for your vintage sound cards. So if you're looking for a DIY project, this might be something interesting to you. So why wait? Head over to pcbway.com and start exploring the world of DIY projects. Links are in the video description. Okay, I already placed some aluminum foil around the chip to protect the surrounding area. I don't want to expose the components that are around this chip to too much heat. I already had to remove one capacitor that was here. And I will use my hot air station. So, let's see. Now let's add a little bit of flux, just a little bit. Don't 
already melts because the board is warm. Okay, the chip is off. That was a very clean lift, I think. Let's clean up these pads and then I want to try and run this card without a chip. I wonder if the system still gets stuck on these BIOS codes. If it continues, well then I think it was the chip. I just want to know what the cause is why my card from 1996 doesn't work anymore. Okay. So as you have seen, the system powers on and I get normal postcodes. That means most likely my S3 chip that was on this card before was dead. So yeah, that's unfortunate, but nothing I can do about this. Why was the S3 so popular? Well, mainly it was because this was one of S3's first highly integrated chip. You saw that there's almost nothing else on this card and it was very cheap. It was very popular with OEM builders because, well, you didn't have to spend too much money on your graphics card budget. If you wanted to have an office PC, the S3 cards were very, very, very good. The 2D performance in Windows was excellent and also support for DOS games was amazing. Of course, S3 is not known for their astounding 3D performance, but for that, we got 3DFX later, and this was a very common setup to have a Voodoo graphics card in combination with an S3 Trio. The pads are clean. I will just clean this up a little bit, and then I will harvest the other S3 chip, and then we will solder it to this board. Hopefully, we will see the BIOS message of this card after so many years again. Okay, I will get this done, and then I'll see you when we are soldering the other S3 chip back on this board. And here is our donor S3 chip. Also a very nice clean lift. And here is a little bit of a solder connection between two pins, but all pins are straight. Now we just have to put this chip on this card. Okay, let's see if this was worth it. <laughs> yes! The card is back alive. That's cool. Unfortunately, I have a dead S3 chip as it looks like. Uh, let's quickly check. We have an S3 with one megabyte of memory. Now, I would like to also increase that and we had some unused chips on this donor card. And I'm wondering, hmm, that is 60 nanoseconds. 
So I think what I will try and do is I will replace the chips on the existing card because they are 70 nanoseconds and solder these 60 nanosecond chips on the board. And then I have sockets where I can put other memory chips later on if I find, again, 60 nanosecond chips. A memory upgrade for a vintage graphics card. I don't think the memory speed makes that much of a difference, to be honest. Hmm, I really didn't think that through. Hmm. I will melt the socket left and right. Let's see. Let's hope this works. Okay, I think I got all of them. Whew. Yeah, I think I got all of them. Okay, great. Whew. Chip number two. Could I have put sockets there? Yeah, probably. I think there is an outline for a socket here as well. So that would have solved my problem. Hmm. I have actually correct sized sockets or I could have taken off the sockets from the other card as well. But to be honest, I never had a broken memory chip on these cards. So yeah, I, I know I probably could have put sockets here, but well, I already sorted this chip and I'm not going to start now with sockets. No, let's just add these chips to the board, but we have still sockets here. The new memory is on. Time to test if it still works. And we have an S3 SVGA card with two megabytes. So that's great. Now I guess let's run some benchmarks and see if the card works as expected. So yeah, unfortunately, I believe this chip is dead. I'm not 100% sure though. So what I will do just for giggles now is I put it back on this card and see if it behaves exactly like the other one did. Basically, the system hangs. It doesn't even go past the C1 postcode. Unfortunately, I really don't know what happened to this chip. Just one day when I tried to use this graphics card, it didn't work anymore. But this happened a long time ago. Okay, this will be the last try. I sorted the S3 chip back on this graphics card. Let's see if we get the same behavior as we did on the other board. And yes, we are stuck at C1. I know I don't have any memory in there, but I don't think it makes a difference. Just for the really curious, I put the memory now in the sockets. Let's see if something changes, but I have my doubts. And it is exactly the same behavior that we got on the other card. Unfortunately, this S3 chip is no longer working. I'm just happy that another mystery that dates back to my childhood is finally resolved and I can move on. I hope you enjoyed today's episode swapping these chips around. And I would like to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. I would also like to thank all my Patreons who are already supporting this channel. And if you want to support my work, you can head over to Patreon and pick one of the membership tiers. As a Patreon, you will get early access to my videos and you will see behind the scenes and future projects I'm going to work on. So thank you so much for your time. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Take care and bye bye.